Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Biochemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be talking about the biosynthetic pathway for the eicosanoids. So first of all, what is an eicosanoid? Well, we need to go back to our organic chemistry and remember eicosane. Eicosane is a hydrocarbon that has 20 carbon atoms. Now, if we look at this compound, arachidonic acid, it's not eicosane, again, because it has four double bonds and it has a carboxyl group, but it has 20 carbon atoms. And so really, any of the compounds here, and actually some others in the next video, that are derived from arachidonic acid, they are termed eicosanoids because they're derived from a compound that has 20 carbon atoms. All right? Now, in general, arachidonic acid can be transformed into a variety of compounds, each of which falls into one of three categories. The largest category are the prostaglandins, the second are the thromboxanes, and third, which will be the next video, are the leukotrienes. Now before we get into the pathway itself, let's understand why you would even need this pathway in the first place. So most of the prostaglandins and thromboxanes and leukotrienes, with the exception of a few, they're generally pro-inflammatory. For example, um, thromboxane A2 is known to stimulate the activity of platelets so that you can attain a blood clot. Um, some of them have other functions, like prostacyclin, also called prostaglandin I2, is actually known for inhibiting platelets. So they have a variety of functions, but most of them are going to be pro-coagulant and pro-inflammatory. So generally speaking, the stimulus to start this pathway is going to be an inflammatory stimulus. So an example of a cell that would have this pathway would be the endothelial cells that line the vasculature. Also, some smooth muscle cells um, also in the vasculature can also operate with this pathway. And so there's some inflammatory stimulus that will activate this enzyme, which is called phospholipase A2. Now look over here in this circle, or this oval right here. So this whole thing is the plasma membrane of the cell, and of course it contains phospholipids. One of those phospholipids is blown up over here on the left, and this is called phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate, which we abbreviate PIP2 for obvious reasons. So you can tell based on the head group and the fact that it's got a phosphate right here and two fatty acid chains that this is a phospholipid. Now this fatty acid shown over here in red is important because it's arachidonic acid. It's just still bound to the glycerol backbone right here. And so what the inflammatory stimulus will do is it will activate phospholipase A2, which is an enzyme that's actually bound in the plasma membrane on the cytoplasmic side, and it will actually hydrolyze off this arachidonic acid fatty acid tail. Okay? And so it generates free arachidonic acid. Now what's important here is that this fatty acid tail that's in red, this is arachidonic acid shown over here, except it's still bound to the glycerol backbone. So when we have this inflammatory stimulus, that leads to the activation of this enzyme, phospholipase A2. And this enzyme is going to be bound in the, in the plasma membrane on the cytoplasmic side, and it just simply clips off the arachidonic acid here from PIP2, generating free arachidonic acid. Now arachidonic acid from the diet is considered pro-inflammatory. It itself is not inflammatory. However, as you can see here through this pathway, it will be transformed into a variety of compounds, most of which are inflammatory. Now phospholipase A2, as we said, is bound in the plasma membrane of the cell. The remainder of these enzymes, generally speaking, are going to be in the membrane of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So cyclooxygenase is going to be in the smooth ER membrane. Arachidonic acid will have to travel there through the cell, and then cyclooxygenase will convert arachidonic acid into the first prostaglandin, prostaglandin H2. Now, prostaglandin H2 really doesn't have much activity by itself as a prostaglandin. It really serves as a chemical precursor to these other molecules over here. Okay, So first of all, prostaglandin H2 can be converted to these other prostaglandins, which they themselves have more activity, and they have different activities from one another, either a lot or a little. So you can see prostaglandin D synthase, prostaglandin E synthase, prostaglandin F synthase, 
leads to the corresponding prostaglandins with the same name. And these three over here, generally speaking, are mostly procoagulant and pro-inflammatory. The exception here is prostaglandin I2, which is also called prostacyclin. Prostacyclin actually inhibits the activity of platelets, so it prevents platelets from abnormally adhering to plasma membranes or other structures, and it prevents them from aggregating, which would normally lead to the clotting of blood. Now, because prostacyclin differs so much in function from the others, it actually does not require an inflammatory stimulus uh, to be made. And actually, endothelial cells will normally be producing a baseline level of prostacyclin to prevent platelet adhesion. Now, you can see over here that prostaglandin H2 can be transformed into thromboxanes, and there's really one major one, thromboxane A2. And so thromboxane synthase is the enzyme that converts prostaglandin H2 into thromboxane A2. Now, while prostacyclin inhibits platelets, thromboxane A2 actually stimulates platelets. So for example, when there actually is, let's say, vessel injury because there's a wound, that causes this cell, which would probably be an endothelial cell, to stop making prostacyclin in favor of these other three prostaglandins and thromboxane A2. And when thromboxane A2 gets released, that will actually trigger platelets to begin adhering to uh, the damaged area and also starting to aggregate. So thromboxane A2 is proplatelet, prostacyclin is antiplatelet. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the eicosanoid pathway, at least for the prostaglandins and thromboxane. In the next video, we're going to be looking at the leukotriene synthesis pathway, and we'll see that it's a different set of enzymes needed. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.